GLP-1 is a lot of things. GLP-1 is a hormone that helps with lowering of blood glucose if you have diabetes. It also inhibits the emptying of the stomach. You lose your appetite and you feel satiated and you stop eating. GLP-1 also does a lot of other things in the body, helping with cardiovascular and kidney health. My name is Jens Juhl Holst and I'm a professor at the University of Copenhagen. My name is Lotte Bjergnudsen. I work in the pharmaceutical company Novo Nordisk. My plan was to become a surgeon. I think it's important to be engaged in the lab work also. Otherwise, you cannot really help the people doing the work unless you understand what is going on, and it makes me feel alive also. I started working with GLP-1 in 1991. From 1995, I was the project lead. Some of the main characters involved in that, we had Yen Shu Hall at the University of Copenhagen, Joel Habener at Massachusetts General Hospital, where also Svetlana Moisov was, as well as Dan Drucker, who then later went to Toronto and made his own food there. When we eat nutrients, are being transported down to the small intestine. And there we have these endocrine cells that produce GLP-1. And they send signals to the brain where we have these regulating centers, regulating appetite, food intake, reward. GLP-1 is both an incretin, something that stimulates insulin secretion, but it also lowers glucagon. So what are insulin and glucagon doing in the healthy body? If the blood glucose concentration is increasing, insulin secretion will be stimulated so that the glucose will come down again. Now, if the glucose concentration falls instead, the alpha cells will start producing glucagon. Glucagon is another hormone that has the opposite effect of insulin. And the glucagon will travel to the liver where it will stimulate glucose production. The falling glucose will be mitigated and you will have a constant level of glucose. So GLP-1 was identified first in 1984. GLP-1 was very, very special. Not only did it stimulate insulin secretion in a wonderful way because it turned out to be dependent on glucose, it also inhibited glucagon secretion. And that's the only hormone from the gut that does that. This was a new idea for the treatment of diabetes that wouldn't give the same kind of hypoglycemia, so too low blood sugar, that are seen with other treatments. A four-hour intravenous infusion into the blood was able to lower blood glucose concentrations to completely normal levels in four hours. But the problem, it is destroyed almost immediately in the body. It doesn't really work as a drug. It's short-acting and unstable, and it, it's just not a good candidate. Half of what you injected is gone after one to two minutes. And that was because of an enzyme that is called dipeptidyl peptidase 4, DPP4. There are little enzymes, metabolic enzymes, that chops it off. It's kind of like a steak because it, it's made up just like a protein. And if you eat a steak, right, it will end up getting chopped down. And the other thing that will happen is that the kidneys clear it, it gets filtered out with the urine. We had several attempts to try and see how we could figure out how to rescue GLP-1. So we had some attempts where we just say, okay, it gets broken down by enzymes, so let's block that. For the treatment of diabetes, we actually have a lot of medicines available. However, the majority of them actually indirectly increases body weight. And as we were looking at this, growing epidemic of obesity and diabetes. This, this was a very undesirable. The most important complication to obesity is diabetes. Then we also tried to make stable formulations. It was possible, but it gave skin reactions. So we also tried to make small molecules, tablet type medicines that didn't work out. After those kind of failed events, it was kind of on, on me in 1995 to figure out a completely different idea where we could try and see how could we make a medicine that was both at a higher dose and more stable. So the mechanism that I proposed we should work with at the time was to take a fatty acid and attach it to the peptide hormone. It will bind to a large molecule we all have in the blood called albumin, and that protects it. So it can circulate in the blood for a long time, and it also protects it from being cleared by the kidneys.
The most exciting result just recently published, 94% of the people that were followed over these three years, they didn't have diabetes, but they were at high risk for developing diabetes. 94% of them could avoid developing diabetes. So the risk of changing obesity into diabetes was completely eliminated. That's huge, that's fantastic. These GLP-1-based medicines have so many effects at the same time. They have a good effect to control glucose without hypoglycemia. At the same time, people lose weight. At the same time, they have a, a good effect on the heart and the kidney. It's a very good medicine for people with diabetes because they get all of this in one. It's possible to bring glucose levels in 50% of all of the type 2 diabetes to completely normal levels. This is unheard of. This has never been possible before. These medicines are good for people with obesity. They help, of course, with the weight and eating less. Weight losses that are not only beneficial for human health, but that are also satisfactory for the patients. One of the things I'm really excited about in today's drug discovery landscape is how we can use AI and also much more data to make even better medicine. And for diseases we haven't yet figured out how to treat, you need to understand the human disease better. And with the application of AI, we're gonna get so much better at that. We're gonna get fast forwarded into understanding better what are the causal mechanisms in disease and then how can we target that. So it's a very exciting time for, uh, for drug discovery science.